Diane Arbus's photos are an intimate insight into the mind of a photographer. She struggled with mental health issues throughout all of her life and before her untimely suicide in 1971, the body of work that she built up is as much a reflection of her own mental state as it is of the people for whom she was photographing. When we look at her portfolio over her entire career, it paints a very interesting portrait of this photographer. Considered by many to be the mother of contemporary art photography, her photographs are both challenging and rewarding. How's it, how's it? Thank you ever so much for joining me here today on The Photographic Eyes. We look at the photographer, Diane Arbus. Diane Arbus's brilliance really was to capture this transition between what's sort of socially acceptable, you know, the personas that we, we have developed and, and nurtured and, and we wear on a day-to-day -day basis, and that transition to the unconscious responses that, that are at the heart of, of our true selves. And, you know, what can be more telling than this the sort of transition, than, than the, looking at the, the photograph of the boy with the hand grenade? You see in, in the contact sheet, you know, she, she meets this, this young man in, in, in New York and takes a series of photographs of her. And he does, I think, runs through the gambit of, of what he thinks he's supposed to do, because by this time in, 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 in a child's life, he's already been kind of conditioned to behave a certain way in front of the camera. And then, of course, a, a switch is, is, is thrown. And all of a sudden, the, the frustrated and, and wild child within him emerges and and that's the that's the brilliant if you want the brilliance of, of Diane in one single image it's that this this ability to tease and recognize or to tease out and recognize that switch and that that brief moment where we are just our honest and true selves inside the majority of Diane Arbus's work was conducted and, and created in the 1960s. So naturally, given the, the social mores of the time, it, it was not without some controversy. The portrait man with the curlers was, was actually physically spat on uh, when it was first shown. You know, don't forget that this was a time when the gay community was, was actively being ostracized and, and treated as second-class citizens. So for Dion to show work that is somehow, I don't want to use the word celebrated because that's not the right really word to use when, when talking about uh, 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 Dion Arbus's photography, but portrayed what I think the, the majority of people considered to, to be inferior people or somehow broken or damaged as normal, everyday human beings who were just the same as you and I must have been a really incendiary thing to to show to people and, and it's no wonder that it caused such diverse and and divisive sort of uh, you know sort of reactions. Diane Arbus wrote to Walker Evans about being drawn to people who reminded of her of her family in the early days of her career and she specifically mentioned her grandmother who was Russian so matriarch who she described as as being rather vulgar but but superb and like and like a contemporary witch and i love the way that Diane is treating humanity if if you want to call it that much like her own family she's seeking some sort of recognition for both the people who were out there in the world uh, and, and, her, and herself. And she did remark that she felt that, as embarrassed as she was to say it, that she felt that if she didn't photograph the things that she saw, then they wouldn't exist for anybody else. And I find that a really fascinating way of looking at, at one's photographs that unless you sort of somehow record it, you put it in film or on, 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 a, on a print, that what you've seen does, does not exist. Dion Arbus's photography started off on, on 35 millimeter when she was walking around the streets. And you can see this in her early work, it's all very grainy, very blurry and overexposed. And later on, she moved into to medium format. And there's, there's something I think that, that has helped elevate her work at this this point that, that we haven't really ever sort of discussed and this is the, the physical act of, of using a medium format. When you photograph in 35 millimeter the camera is up to your eye and, and the camera is a physical barrier between your face 
and the face of the subject whom you're photographing. Whereas with a media format camera, so only one like, like um, Diane Arbus was using, which has a waist level finder, you don't have this physical barrier between yourself and the subject in the same way that you do with 35 millimeter. She can look down, she can compose the image, but then she can look up and engage with the, with, with the subject because the camera doesn't need to be in front of her face. And it, this, this creates, I think, a, an air of intimacy between the subject and the photographer and, and an interaction that's simply not possible with, with 35 millimeter. Despite being lauded as an artist and, and coming from a wealthy background, Dion Arbus struggled quite significantly financially, you know, and so much so that in 1970, she produced a portfolio of, of prints called um, a box of prints, uh, a box of 10 prints, sorry, by Dion Arbus. And that, this was priced at, uh, I'd, I'd imagine, a fairly, uh, to, one, to modernize it, a fairly reasonable uh, $1,000. And this was an intended to be an edition of, of 50. Um, however, only four of those were ever produced before her suicide in 1971. One of them was, was given to a, a close friend. Two others were sold to some various people and, and Ansel Adams bought the, 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 the other. But it just goes to show you know, how wide ranging and how respected Diane Arbus's photography was. You know, certainly she was laying the foundations for, for contemporary art photography. Uh, that's something that we, you know, that, that photograph, this idea that photographs could be something that would be collected. And, and, and I think that's, that's amazing that, that a, a photographer of the stature of Ansel Adams you know, decided that, that having a keepsake of her prints was worthwhile. The portfolio contains some of her most famous photographs. The twins, uh, which, which no doubt you may have seen at some point, uh, a, you know, a print of which that sold for four hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. Which, if you'd bought one of those boxes, you know, in in nineteen seventy, would be would be a, a handsome uh, return on investment. Uh, and of course, you know, the Jewish giant at home, which which also sold for a considerable sum later on. Dion Arbus drew inspiration from, from many photographers. You know, she was a good friend of, of Walker Evans. And she also got ideas from a photographer called August Sander. And now his photography was in sort of Germany, turn of the century up until sort of the, the you know, this is the 1930s, so 1940s, photographing ordinary folk. And again, much like Dion Arbus, the people possibly on the fringes. He's, he's well known for his, his circus portraits. And, and if you look at his photography and, and Dion Arbus' side by side, there are so many similarities. And I love this about great photographers is they share so many similarities and yet they are completely different and they make the medium their own. Dion Arbus' photography runs a such a wide range of emotions from the so almost voyeuristic work of, of her early days through to the to the confident and, and direct photography of, of the, the 1960s through to this sort of slightly uneasy and, and disturbed and, and almost ethereal work and photography that she was she was creating just before her suicide. Diane was, was genuinely drawn to the, these, these people and the, the subjects that she photographed. And, you know, you can't just be a voyeur and, and go into somebody's world, take some pictures and leave and, and end up with the photographs that, that Diane Arbus produced over, over the course of her career. You need to have some empathy. You need to have interest. And, and the subjects need to feel that you are part of, of the whole process that you are as much invested in in the photographs as, as they are. From a photographer's point of view, it helps us see the importance of, of empathy and feeling like we are part of the process and not just an impartial observer. That f we need to find things that remind us of ourselves within our work, especially when, when photographing people, because it gives our work a personality and a connection that it would otherwise lack. For somebody who just enjoys looking at photographs, it's an opening to a world of contemporary art photography that is sometimes difficult to, to get the point of, to understand why you should find these photographs interesting. And if you don't find them interesting, that's perfectly fine. But if, it, it encourages you to explore and, and seek out 
photography that's, that's beyond the norm, as, as it were. Today, 50 years after Dion Arbus's suicide, her photos continue to inspire and influence contemporary art photographers of today. One only has to look at the word of the work of Loretta Lux and V. Spears to see similarities and how her work is being taken forward into a completely new direction. To see more of these videos and highlights of other famous photographers over the years, please subscribe to the channel. This is The Photographic Eye. Hit that notification bell and you'll be sure to see all these videos that are coming out every Friday. Thanks ever so much for joining me here today and I look forward to seeing you again soon.